Hey guys, this is Test 56 Game 2. This is the furniture game. It's a matching game, also known as assignment. We know this because we have the four people, G, H, J, M, being assigned to one of three pieces of furniture, R, S, T, at least one piece, maybe more than one. Now I've laid out some rules here, I'll explain each of those. They tell us that G moves this sofa if and only if H moves the recliner. Now the first if in that statement is a sufficient condition indicator telling us that HR requires GS. The second part, only if, tells us that GS requires HR. So each of these things being the case requires the other to be the case and vice versa. So if we have GS, then we have HR. If we have HR, then we have GS. Also, if we don't have GS, then we won't have JR. And if we don't have JR, then we don't have GS. So these two things require each other to be in. And if one of them is out, the other is out. So either both of these occur or neither occurs. Next, they tell us that JT requires MR. And finally, G and J never do anything together. So very little in the way of inferences up front for this game. These rules don't really link together much. We'll do more work here over the course of the game itself. Now, question number seven is a typical orientation question. We're just taking one rule at a time and applying it to all five choices, looking for violations. So we know that G and J can never be together. So any choice where they are together isn't going to work and can be eliminated. Choice B has G and J together, unacceptable. So B, and B can be eliminated. None of the other choices violates this rule. We also know that JT requires MR. So any choice where J is on T, we have to have M on R, or else it's a bad choice. Let's look through the choices here. Choice C has J on T, yet does not have M on R. Therefore, C can be eliminated. The other two choices are good on this issue. We finally have the double arrow rule here, looking at A, D, and E. Do we have G, S in any of those? Yes, we have it in E. We have G, S, and E. Do we have H, R in E? We do not. Therefore, E can be eliminated. And now we're down to A and D. Now in D, we have H and R, yet we do not have G in S. As such, D can be eliminated, leaving A for number seven. Next, number eight. If J and M both move the recliner, so if J and M are both on the recliner, then what follows? Well, we know that G and J are never together. We know that JT requires MR. Those don't, are, don't seem relevant, but the first rule, GS and MR, HR require each other. We do not have H on R, therefore we do not have G on S, because GS would have required HR. So if H is not on R, and G's not, then G's not on S, so where's G, where's G gonna go? G can't go on S, so it has to go to T. That's the inference that immediately follows from the information in the question stem here. So G has to be on T, and choice D for number eight says exactly that, so D's our answer for eight. Next, number nine, if H moves each of the pieces of furniture, so if we have H on R, H on S, and H on T, then what happens? Well, HR requires GS, we have H on R, here therefore we have G on S, and then J and M are interchangeable on R and T. Of course, we have to have at least one person in, a, in every valid scenario, so JT requiring MR would, would be fine, we wouldn't be violating that. And of course, we're not going to violate G and J here since we already have H on each of the three pieces of furniture. So what could be true? G on R, no, either J or M has to be there, so A is gone. Looking at B, M on R, yeah, that could happen. We could have JT, MR works perfectly fine, therefore B is our answer for 9. I will look at the rest though. J on S, no, G and H are there. J could be on either R or T, but never S. Looking at D, M on S. No, G's there, M could be on either T or R, but never S. Then looking at E, G on T, no G's on S, therefore E's gone leaving B. Next, number 10, which could be a pair of people who help each other move both R and T? So very open-ended question. We can eliminate a few choices off the bat, though. We know that G and J are never together, so for that reason, A is gone. We also know that D can be eliminated because it lacks both G and J, meaning that G and J would be together on as as a result of H and M being on both R and T together. So A and D are eliminated off the bat. The other three choices that we have to do a little bit of work for. So looking at B, G and M. Could we have G and M on both R and T? Well, if we did, we'd have to have H and, H and um, 
j together on s. And so that actually works perfectly fine. Doesn't activate the JT then MR rule. It doesn't have either GS or HR occurring. And G and J are not together, therefore we're totally good. And B is our answer for 10. I will look at the other choices though. So C having H and G on R and T, that H and J on R and T, that would leave G and M on S. The problem here is that JT requires MR. We've got J on T, yet we do not have M on R. Therefore, C can be eliminated. Now, finally, looking at E, J and M on R and T. So if we had J and M on R and J and M on T, that would leave G and H to be on S. The problem is that GS requires HR, and there's no room for H to be on R here when we have G on S. As such, E's gone as well, leaving B. Next, number 11, if J and M help each other move the sofa. So if J and M were both on the sofa, what would happen as a result? Well, we wouldn't be able to have H on R because we do not have G on S here, and HR requires GS. Therefore, H would have to go on T right away. We know that to be true, and H could not be on R, of course. I'm going to make a marking for that as well. So even with that information alone, we can get through this. A and B are both eliminated off the bat due to the fact that we know we cannot have H on R. We can also eliminate C due to the fact that G and J are never together, period. Now, if we look at D, G and M each moving the table, no room for that due to the fact that H has to move the table and there's only two people per piece of furniture. Therefore, we get E by elimination for number 11. And H and M both moving the table works perfectly fine. We could have G here and then have you know somebody else. We could have maybe M or maybe J. Works perfectly fine. Therefore, E is our answer for 11.